Okay, good night and thank you for uh, coming back. The person, the people that was the free toll and the, for the free comment, thank you for, for coming here. Um, we will talking about today about HTMX. Um, not a new library, but it's getting a lot of uh, publicity or, or being like in the boost war a lot recently, but it's not very new. Um, for me, it's very interesting. Uh, I am an old developer, so this brings me back to the old times where uh, web development was uh, easy and especially happy, uh, not bored and not tiresome. So for me, it's like, oh my God, this is so good. And I feel like, like nice. Uh, is not adding complexity to web development. That is something that uh, for the last year, framework, front-end framework is, are adding. Like React, I think, is one of the one that add more complexity. But there are other cool pricks, Angular, Boo, all, all the framework are adding complexity, layers and layers. I, I, I call that the mon the mountain of complexity or complexity mountain. Um, HTMX solved that, fortunately. So, some uh, um, before I, l I, I l heard that some people uh, know about HTMX, so how many know something about HTMX? Okay, 30%, 40%, so that is nice. So, let's see if I can teach something new um, and for the rest uh, I want to teach something so some caution there are a lot of memes ahead so no, don't take it personally I will uh, talking uh, about Riyadh a lot why because it's the most popular and why because in my perspective this is the worst uh, even when I work daily it's giving me money right now I develop with Riyadh every day so, yeah. So, what is STMX? So, literally, is a extension to HTML. So, give us some uh, features that we was using before all, all the time. Ajax, basically, transition. So, everything that we was doing before with JavaScript, but without JavaScript. So, <laughs> that's. That is good. I love JavaScript, but I don't like to write every single thing. So uh, what is HTMX? It's like this guy say, or the the creator is like, why we should not, or why HTML don't have these features, like natively? Like the only um, forms, we, we can only use uh, form to send data to the to the server is the only way that we can send data, but no other way. Why? So he create um, some properties to send data f with uh, uh, from any element. So that is uh, a feature that is very useful, and also give us transition and a lot of interactivity that uh, we can do it uh, with vanilla JavaScript, with jQuery, with uh, any other library or framework, but we don't have to write that code. So we uh, can use uh, the old HTML that we know and just uh, extend that with some properties. So something that also li uh, is very important to me is dependency free. It's just a file, nothing any uh, like anything else is if you go to the github of html and it's, it's a file three thousand and something lines nothing more and that is very important i am very uh, sensitive with the dependencies so for me that was like oh finally i don't have to worry about installing hundreds or thousands of uh, indirect dependencies when i install a package so why you should use HTML? So for me, that uh, image represents what I think, and I think not 
only me think about the current state of web development. We have to suffer a lot to build the simple application. Uh, I put React there, but replace React with any other framework. So it's not just about React. React is just because it's short to put there. But we had to worry about React, the bundler, what bundler we will use. Uh, we have to deal with the JSON API. Um, if the backend developer uh, do a good job, you receive a good documentation, so you will know what uh, what endpoint do you have to call and how. You have to deal with CSS framework. Um, that tailwind craziness, especially if somebody chooses, please don't do it. Um, yeah, it's a lot of decision that, for me, take away all the funny part, and that is because I kind of abandoned uh, front-end development because was I was tired. I'm too like sorry for the word, but it's from a movie, a old movie. It's like I'm too old for that shit. It's from a uh, little, little, uh, Arma Mortal, little something. It's our movie. So, how with, with the girl? So, again, it's uh, based on React, but seen in any other framework too. We we'll start with this, uh, this uh, fake promise of that React gives us. Oh, it's just JavaScript. And we will just use uh, HTML. It's like yes, you treat us to thin this. Oh, and have it's based on class classes and have great life cycle method. Okay. After that, it's like huh, but uh, you have to call a component update uh, and not this other unsafe that was available in the beginning. So okay. And I said that, oh, functional component. And we have to rewrite all our applications because now all the paradigms change. And they remove the fancy um, methods uh, that they give us before. So now we have to struggle to understand what is use effect, how to use it, how to don't create like an infinite uh, loop, and all these things. So OK. So I said that is like, oh, do you hear about use memo, use call, but oh, that is how we can fix all the performance issues that we create for you because the documentation is not the best. And okay. And now it's like, okay, the new thing. I you read about real server components. Oh, now you have to use use client, use client, use server to write all your logic in React. So this is the best. I promise. That is the last thing. So we finish with something like this. It's like a pizza with candies and a full chicken and all kind of things that is like, oh my God, like how, how we finish in this state. So two bullet points why HTMX is great. Stop having so much client state because the state on the client is fake. The state is in the server. Anything that happened in the server is the real state. If we have some state in the client, we have to all the time synchronize the state because we can trust the client because it's the client. The user can do everything. They can modify the state manually. Anything can happen. So the only pseudo true is the backend state. So why we have to add 10,000 line of Redux library to manage the state when that state is fake. It's not the real state of the application. So that is a good other point to don't have a state in the front end and use HTMX. So feature is lightweight. It's very a small library. It's easy to learn because uh, everything that you know about HTML, you can use it. Uh, in the back end, you can reuse everything that you learn, especially if you are older like me. You know how to do this. Uh, it's 
easy to integ integrate because you don't have to rewrite your whole application. If you have a static website, it's even easier because you don't have to remove all this framework that you was using. And this is <coughs> from the web page, it's a haiku. It's like the motto that have uh, HTMX is like, and it's very, the JavaScript fatigue. It's like every year maybe or less, a new framework come and it's the new greatest thing in the world. It's solving all the problems that we have, but if you're giving us a lot of more problems. So why to use something new when we have something that solves the problem, like not solve the problem, like can we can use to solve the problems that we have and what are the problem, the application problem, not dealing with uh, the tool. So uh, Ajax, that is something very important for us. How do we manage uh, Ajax? Uh, HTMS give us uh, this uh, very convenient um, properties. For example, if we want to make a get uh, request to the server xx get on the endpoint, and this will, uh, if for example, if it's a button or something other event because it's we can uh, trigger this uh, uh, this call with other event, not just a click. And the same, like we have like uh, the most common crude uh, method: get, pod, put, patch, delete, and that make the operation that we already know. So let's see a live example here. So that is, I have a button and I will, when I click that button, I will call an API. And the result of that API, I will put it in this, uh, tar in this uh, pa paragraph uh, um, tag. So I have the button, it's a HTML button. I use the X, X get with the endpoint and I see the result put it in this target. So when I click that button, oh, let me see. I have the result there. Nothing else. I don't have to write any JavaScript. I don't have to worry about anything else. I just say, and it's very, uh, it's very easy to read. It's like I have a button, I get that get, and the target is this uh, this uh <coughs> ID, and I can see the ID. Where is the ID? So it's um, it's easy to follow. It's easy to read. So I can just call whatever and put it there. Um, another example here is a little bit more elaborate. <coughs> I have the same, like uh, it's just uh, a label and an input. I will call the same um, a, an endpoint, the target, and the trigger uh, using not uh, a click, it's a K up with a delay of uh, 500 uh, milliseconds, and I'm using indicator, so for the typical loader. So the loader is just uh, attack and for example let's see here javascript i have my indicator there and i get the result so that is how i can create a a very easy way to call an endpoint with an end loader indicator with a delay to use the bones that we have to use write all that with a set timeout and all these magical tree that we had to build with JavaScript. This is just uh, with HTML attributes. Uh, this is uh, a pause. Uh, oops, sorry. So we have like a uh, form. Uh, <coughs> I will call this uh, endpoint. The target will be this post container and I have my um, form fields. Um, what this code is doing? Okay, when I submit this, uh, we'll send the form info in a post to that endpoint and the result 
uh, we put it in the uh, container. So I can send here like uh, something title is like X make is great. Uh, let's do it. Okay. Uh, this endpoint obviously is not returning HTML uh, because it's uh, it's just a JSON endpoint. Uh, so I'm just mm, putting the result here, but normally, um, of normally no, uh, the endpoint that is a bit different. The endpoint with HTML doesn't return JSON, return HTML. So that is a bit changed too, but that is was like we was used to work long time ago. So why? Because we start to send back some uh, intermediate data like before was HTML, uh, XML. Unfortunately, we stopped that. After that, we passed to JSON. But now the, the flow was getting the data from the database, transform that to this protocol, let's say a JSON, receive that in the, in the client, transform that protocol to an object in JavaScript and converse, transform that object to an interface. Why? Um, that is now uh, reduced to get the data from the database, produce the HTML, and just insert it in the page where we need it. So we are also reducing a lot of the time that the application has to consume, especially in the client. So use case, <coughs> real time update, like we see here, like we are producing this update uh, in real time in the client, very easy. Uh, form submission, we show how uh, we can submit data very easy and also progressive enhancement. enhancement. So we don't have to uh, build the whole application with HTML, we can start to add uh, what we need to use little by little, so uh, in an easy way. So it's also uh, something that I like it because I don't have to rewrite my whole application. I don't have to spend months rewriting something uh, with a new paradigm. So I can start to use it what, uh, immediately and use only what I need. So um, HTMX is getting also attention and also hate because uh, it's simple and simplicity is seen now like a bad thing. It's like an outdated thing. Like if something is simple, it's like, nah, that look like PHP. Or that look like something. It's like, yeah, and it's nice, it's easy. Why we need to build all this layer of complexity to build the simple application uh, endpoint? Everything had to be so complicated right now and something simple is getting some hate because it's simple and it's some people just say like no that is looks so bad why it return html and it's like yeah but you write react you render <laughs> uh, yeah your component return html even html return jsx that is even worse so Oh, that is the flow that I was uh, mentioned. Database to JSON to JavaScript to HTML. Why? Database to HTML, and that is all. We do reduce a lot of uh, complexity. You reduce a lot of uh, power consumption and computing power and time, especially. So <coughs> that is something that, for me, is very important. Let's let, let HTML bring back the happiness, uh, because uh, for me, it's very easy to write application with HTML, HTMX. Uh, how I have to write everything in React right now is sometimes uh, it's time consuming and it's tiresome. So, uh, conclusion before we jump to something more interesting uh, HTMX is a powerful thing, tool sorry, for creating interactive web application. And this is how a lot of people is looking HTML X right now. 
like with disgusting uh, look. So, yeah. So let's see some code. So what I bring, I bring the same application. Uh, I build the application in uh, React and I build the application in HTML. So we can compare the code and how uh, complicated or simple it is and you can take the decision. It's, uh, it's a very simple application, it's a to-do, but that can uh, demonstrate um, how, how to build. So we can see uh, the code. The code I will execute uh, this. So fit at all for the React, you have to think to have two things: the front end and the back end separate. So I will run uh, the front end. So okay, uh, let's run the back end. The JSON, I think. Yes. So let's go back and call this. Let's close this. Right here. So this is the uh, the to do application. Uh, so we can create more stuff here. Learn HTMX. So this is a series of uh, React components that are calling uh, behind the scenes uh, my backend. You can see here. Let's filter for this one. So what is this doing? It's calling this uh, this endpoint with this payload and is receiving a JSON and this JSON update the state of the component or the application and something happened is how normally React application works and this is the code <coughs> I just um, get all the, the tasks uh, from the backend I start to build the application so this is the app component called to do's uh, that may all the the operation and re and use other uh, other components that are uh, header and main se section. Uh, the main section render the to dos. Um, yeah, you have um, manage the edit. Um, that is how you build um, normal React application with a bunch of component and small components and. Uh, for like the good practices, like having small component that manage uh, a small concern. Um, yeah, you just send uh, requests, get send uh, JSON, get JSON with the state, React render that uh, new state for you. So how uh, this work in uh, HTMX? Um, application so let's uh, stop this and let's call the the backend and it's the only thing that we need so we call it here um oh no it's i don't why did this happen Okay, so this is the same application, but um, running uh, with HTMX and using the same database that is a JSON file. Uh, but what uh, what we are getting? Let's see uh, the the transactions. So, for example, if I want to complete this, what I send. 
just make it big and we can see the code after network I send in like saying is I send in some data but in this case it's not the JSON it's foreign data and uh, what I'm receiving I'm receiving a piece of HTML XML that piece is the HTML that I, I will to render and something very interesting also is I can update several part of the application with this HTML so because here what we have we have um, the new uh, element um, because it's a, the new element is marked like complete but I also receive the new uh, item that are let in my to-do but these are two unrelated elements but I can update the uh, interface at the same time with this property uh, SWAT out of cont out of boundary if I, I mark this element like out of boundary he will use the ID of the element to update the application so I can update several part of the application with just one request uh, the only thing that I need to do is mark the that part like out of boundary and obviously uh, return the same ID that the element have in the interface um, that is all like for example let's see how it worked uh, we have two here but if I mark this see I have I receive a three here so this is uh, updated in the interface so it's very practical because I don't have to worry about how I will update this I only need to return the correct data that in this case is HTML and the library take care of that for me so how I render in this so let's see let's close all these uh, codes and let's jump to the back end um, see the server HTMX and using Express here is is like a typical Express application and the first thing uh, I'm using handlebars uh, for the templates so I, I I have the let's increase the okay so I have my views here I have the um, uh, let's close this this is the index uh, of the application and I have some uh, sub template here that manage uh, every piece of the uh, and let's close this okay I think it's better so it's, it's a normal uh, HTML page and including some um, custom CSS and, and the rest is just HTML with the HTMX properties I'm using some uh, sub template uh, uh, we will see that immediately and this is uh, handlebar syntax uh, another uh, sub template that this is for the footer that show how many uh, uh, tasks are left and this is for the filters that are this part here but it's, it's a normal um, HTML um, the rest of the templates are here for example the in this is the the little piece of HTML that is in the bottom of the uh, request that I show uh, before that the only thing that I uh, do is show like oh three tasks less two tasks less and that and the item is uh, is every single task is a li uh, that just render a individual um, task or a to do in my list and I'm using again handlebars and this is handlebar syntax that we we use these two uh, curly braces um, and here you render whatever you pass I'm passing a, a to do that have an ID and a test and if it's complete or not so if it's complete I add the completed uh, CSS class is not I don't add it 
I render here the ID and the test is rendered here. So that uh, is this is this element if we inspect this. So it's um, let's inspect. This is the li. So every one of these elements is this template. And with uh, so I render in as much element like to do I have in my database. So if somebody uh, developed with uh, PHP, Ruby, Ruby or, or these uh, languages, like this is kind of uh, home. Is not is kind of similar how you develop in React or Angular or other um, um, framework, front-end framework, where this include is like a subcomponent. Um, this is uh, like this is similar to how I did it in in React. Uh, for example, this is component. I think it's in the to do. Uh, in the main section. Yeah, that part is this. It's like I'm rendering the the item. This uh, to template is basically a to do item. So w all this code was to build the same thing in HTML. All this thing, and now is just this. So it's a lot of less code, a lot of a lot of less complexity, and um, yeah, this is just a to do, uh, a simple to do. Can you uh, multiply this for a more complex uh, application, and you will have like more components, more line of code, um, yeah, more time, more effort, more developer, more money that the company will need to uh, invest some time time to market that is very important. Um, every single um, endpoint uh, just work the same. I, For example, this is to get one, I, one, um, one to do. So I'm getting the same, the, the to do ID. I get the ID from my list of ID and render the, the it the edit it um, item, um, I pass the that to do, and I get the 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 data. For example, let's see that here. Let's, for example, if I double click this, I get <coughs> the form with the input and with the data. Is is visible? Okay, yeah, that's enough. So I'm getting exactly all this and receiving everything ready. Um, the action with the ID, the method, um, and the test here. This and if I click another one, now I receive just this. So I'm, re I'm we don't receive JSON now that have to render uh, the state. We receive exactly what we need to uh, render and HTMLX library just uh, do that for us. And the same for every other um, method. For example, in the post, I'm just creating uh, the new to do, insert it in the database and rendering um, the new item and the new item count uh, using the handlebar templates and returning uh, the two markup that is uh, the item um, um, behind below uh, the new item count and HTMLX library or data interface for me and the same for every single uh, endpoint I'm using the the same. Uh, template that I'm using in the main application to render sp uh, that specific uh, 
operation for the uh, path I'm the same using the I know dating uh, uh, the to do with the new data that I receive I'm sending back the the HTML with the new uh, data and the same for everything so uh, I will fill the react application and reuse the same code for the for the server but now I am not returning the, the JSON I'm returning the HTML and that was uh, how it did it but was way easier to build the the HTMLX application because I don't have to write all this uh, code like for the simple uh, thing I have to write all this thing to deal with the uh, with the component with the different uh, it's called conditional rendering when it's editing or not editing uh, all these things that we need to do uh, in Riyadh or replace with any other front-end framework. So it's way less code. Literally, they are not JavaScript code, just uh, in the server code and obviously the HTML. Uh, until here, any question uh, that we can solve? Which one? Okay. Okay, this is HyperScript. This is uh, another library that is related to HTMLX, but it's not part of the HTMLX. It's another library that you can use uh, aside of <coughs> HTMLX, but you can um, give you it's kind of this same philosophy like uh, give you interaction but you don't have to write the uh, JavaScript you decorate you can call it that, that way you decorate the uh, the HTML with some behavior so in this case if uh, after load remove uh, this to do but this is called hyperscript but it's not mandatory it's just something not related to to HTMLX. you can use it separated and you can use javascript like uh, the, the the message is like javascript doesn't disappear of your application just is reduced. There are some things that you need to do manually or using uh, other library. For example, that is something that um, I did uh, this week for an article that I want to write. It's like how to order a HTML table with using a library. Like the normal that you click the header and this reorder ascending or descending or you can search I do that with 29 line of code uh, and apply to any table that you uh, give. So that you can do JavaScript for that kind of thing that are just related to fronting or something in my job that I have to render a PDF in the in the frontend. That is just JavaScript. Uh, I, I can do that with backend because I need to render it in the frontend. Uh, it's not related to HTMLX because I had to load the, the the PDF from the computer, the client computer, and render it in the frontend. So there are a lot of things that you still need to use JavaScript and build that yourself. But all this little thing that send that data, get data of the interface, do animation when something happened, update several parts of the application at the same time or when something happened, you don't have to write that by yourself. And you don't have to do all these things that I show like database or replace database. Sometimes you get the data from a third party API. So get the data, transform to JSON, 
get the data from JSON, transform to JavaScript, and transform to HTML. So you don't have to do all this thing by yourself. So you have you reduce uh, the the conversion because you don't have to transform from from JSON again to JavaScript and after that to HTML. And the code is less. Yeah, it's it's, it's it yeah, it's it's a way to inject or decorate HTML with some dynamic behavior. It's kind of the same that HTML X do, but just for for s yeah, don't allow you to do requests to the server or something. It's more I for interactivity. So you is is you can use it or not. It's not are not related to to um but i think it's because i don't this is not working fine because i forget to inject a sh I hyperscript link so it's not uh removing the the idea is when you uh here will work but when you just click other other part just remove the form and go back to but i forget to inject uh or to load the hyperscript library that is to do that. Um, yeah, you can. Oh, that is important. The filters. You can see here that is just I'm using just um, the URL. I am not even using um, requests. So the good thing is like you start you st a lot. Another thing is HTML application are not. SPA or simple page application. You go back to the multi-page multi-page application paradigm, and that bring back some good things. Like for example, you don't have to worry about SEO because when you have a simple page application, you have to deal with how to provide SEO to the search engine because uh, yeah, the like uh, the front end routers uh, don't. Uh, play well with the search engine. So with the multiplayer application, you don't have to worry uh, about that because uh, the routing is just the traditional routing. It's just you load you load a new page and that is all. But a good thing is like you can preserve some content from a previous, previous page to another. For example, a video playing or a song playing. If you are in a page playing a video from YouTube, for example, you embed a video and you transition to another page. What happened? That video disappeared because that is a H, uh, HTML tag that was in the previous page, not in the new page. But you can mark that element like preserve and in the new transition, you will have that. So give you some simple page simple, simple, simple page application features in a multi-page application paradigm so it's it's nice it's in like in the documentation i forget to put that example i have preserve keep the element in chain during during by id so that help uh, with when, when you need to preserve some state or some content from one page to another. One e example that comes here is like the typical video or song or whatever media media that is playing that you don't want to just uh, lose uh, when you transition. And all the all the the documentation is here. Is every single parameter uh, is with sa examples, how to use it. Uh, it's getting a, been a lot of tutorials and reference on internet. So it's getting uh, a lot of noise on internet. Uh, but the, the documentation is, is good. That for me is also uh, very important uh, because I think that was one of the key of the jQuery success. Like the documentation was amazing. Like you can learn jQuery just reading the documentation. And I think with HTML X have 
is you can do the same. Reading the documentation, you can get like a very good uh, understanding of the library or what allowed and how to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's 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 do it. Let's see how how like. Let's start from the beginning. Let's let's put this here. Let's clean it and let's double click. So what you get? You get the form. Okay. So start to run weekly soon. So what you saying? You send the test that was the test is the name of the the, f the element that is this. Uh, yeah, the name. You you send literally the form, and what you get you get the uh, the new ID. The sorry, the new item with the new data, and it's just updated in the interface. When you want to do what? Hmm. Yeah, like, um, good question. And I don't have it right now. But you can, uh, for example, just uh, in in the event, you can just bring back, uh, make another call and bring back uh, the original uh, data. But because the hyperscript, what it's doing um, is removing the... the to do I said on lot yeah I don't take care of the hyperscript when I was doing so yeah I don't I can give you the answer later if you give me your email but Yeah, like this example. Like this. You can do something in trigger. The what? The But what you catch? You catch the you bundle, you catch the you don't catch the data that is coming because that is dynamic and not every time is the same. Like you normally catch the asset, you catch the bundle, you catch the uh, the static thing. But if you want to implement other like you can implement any catch system in the backend. Like Yeah, but it's kind of the same problem with uh, a simple pay application. If you if you make a, a request uh, in JSON and you receive JSON, like you can catch, you cannot catch that. I guess it's some frameworks, but I, or I'm not sure how it works. At least on the backend, it's still 
Yeah, like, uh, yeah, is uh, you can implement like a caching system in in the backend. Like, if you detect that uh, it's the same data or the same result, or you don't produce it again, you you have it. And uh, yeah, you have to deal with the caching validation and all this thing. But it's the same that you do like with all the pipelines. The only thing that change is the proto the communication protocol. You don't are not sending back JSON. You are sending back. Uh, HTML and it's the same like if, if the JSON doesn't change you can catch that but on the only change that uh, well change the, 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 the communication protocol and change like that you don't have to parse it in the, f in the, in the front end but uh, it's, it's the same paradigm Good question. I, I don't. I never use it in, in. But like handlebars, it's to get the types of for the handlebar because all the. Okay, to send, uh, yeah, like for example, you have a template that receives like ID, test, and and complete, and you send other stuff. Yeah, but uh, in that tape, in that um, your type is before you send the data to the handlebar, uh, to the comp comp um, render, uh, you need to be sure that that is the correct type. Like it's a to do, for example, and you need like you have a type for that or an interface or something. Like it's up to you uh, what you send. But if you, for example, let's see the code. Yeah, but for example, here that I'm sending um, to dos, normally in, in TypeScript you will have like something like this that is uh, to do. If this fail, you are not sending. Yeah, you are you are doing the guard the type guard here, so you don't need it here. Is your application have the correct types? <laughs> okay, okay. You want it here. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. No. We can see. Yeah. Nah, I don't know. Yeah, when receive when uh you are you are sending back a HTML L but um I I still normally I read the code of everything that I use, but not yet with HTMLX. But what I think that do is like it's a normal AJAX request that it's when you send uh, send it to the server, you expect the result, and when you get the result, that injected in the in the DOM, like if you do it by yourself. So uh, they use the target that. You have because if if you don't uh, provide a target, the target is the element that triggers the uh, the request. So that is the default behavior. If you provide a target, the library search for that target in the page and insert that data there. So 
how this works. You make a Ajax request, a normal fetch, or let's say a fetch request to the endpoint. The endpoint sends you back a HTML. You receive it. You search for the target. Let's say that you provide the target, and you say target dot uh, document get element uh, query selector the target uh, dot inner HTML. Let's say that he used uh, inner HTML and insert the HTML that you receive. That is how, like in big skin, I think HTML X word. I don't think that use inner HTML, but to make it easier. From React, no, but for example, I like the template system of Vue on Angular because it's nice. It's, it's like, uh, it's kind of the, it's, it's very clean uh, to use it. I, for example, I could use that template system separate from the framework. I will use it because it's very, it's very, very convenient. Like uh, you read a Angular template or a Vue template, and you understand what is happening. It's like a, it's a fourth, and it's it's very easy uh, easy to read. Handlebar is not that complicated, but I think the other are way better. I don't like JSX because it's when I, it's nice when I don't need repeat something because I need to use JavaScript and mix it with the JSX. So will be JSX will be perfect for me if have like a four mechanisms in the in the template system. And that will be nice. And don't have to mix J uh, JavaScript with thing. I that would be for me the perfect JSX and I will use it. It's not, it, you can trust in the stage, in the state, in the front end, because you can open the console and modify the state. So in the end, the only, the pseudo true is the backing. Like, uh, that is because you always validate the data that you receive from the, from the client, because you can receive whatever uh, data from the client, but the state, the real state is always in the backend. It's like it's in the database. Like if a user is log, if a user is uh, login, is in the backend. You receive like a JSON with token, and that mean that uh, the user is login. But where is the user really login? Or who wha who validate that is is the backend because you send back the JSON with token and you verify in the backend if the JSON with token is alive, if it's still not expired or is valid. You can send a JSON with token, you can fabricate it, but that JSON with token you stored in the database to know if that is valid or not. If you if you create that JSON with token, so. This is the backend who know if that was created for you or was the user that just fabricated a JSON with token and send them back to say like, hey, I'm logging. And you say like, no. In embedded system, no, but you could use it. Yeah, because normally they are very antiquated, like they are not, or yeah, some companies have the last one, but normally these are things that are used for years. So sometimes the browser is not like Chrome last version, it's like an Internet Explorer. Seven, eight, or nine, or something like that, or it's very old. So you can use React, or you have to use a very old React version, or something like that, because that. But with this, I think like they have like some compatibility table, but I don't remember it. I see, but 
it's easier because you don't have to parse all this thing. But I think they have it in some way, in some part, the compatibility. But it's up to the browser, what the browser uh, support. No. More questions? What is what? Let's see. I think they have like here. Uh, is that what? How? What do you say with that? What do you mean? Why? No, no, but what? No, no, I know, but what made you feel that? What is the grass that? But how you produce, like, do you see complexity in producing the HTML in the backend? Yeah, but with this is basically server components. Like, what is, but with all the, like, for me, with all the complexity, like, is, is server, is the new thing, React is going to this direction. Like, the new server component is like, no, but it's like, do you, I don't know if you see that we are doing like a 300 great turn going back to this point, like where we need to the server because what? R performance, because it's faster to have all these things in the, in the, in the server. So we are, we are not like some people is building all these um, mechanisms to do server-side rendering, like uh, now React provides the server-side component, but it's kind of the same, like you produce the estima the JSX in the server. And it's If you if you have to build it by yourself, yeah, but are a lot of libraries that do it that have drawdown, nice drawdowns that you can use it because it's just HTML and JavaScript. It's not just.
Yeah. But for example, like you need to render something the first time. In a React application, you render nothing the first time. If you are not using a server side rendering, you read nothing. You read like a index with a tag empty. So you need to do a request to get the data. If that takes three minutes, the no, 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 but we, ha we have the same. No, no, but we have the same problem. We have the same problem. If the field request takes three minutes, you have the page empty for three minutes. If we estimate X, OK. But what, why is different that sending a fetch with React? Let's 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 say this. But for example, yeah, let's, when I click here, I do, I ask for the data from that element. That is how you do it normally. You, have, you should do it. If it takes three minutes in HTMLX, will take three minutes in React too. You can keep working here. You can, I, this thing, I can just open another one or you can implement the same thing like, the problem is like what I I been seeing is we forget that everything that we make with a framework we do it before with without a framework. Like we are losing the capacity of do something without a framework, even manipulate the DOM. And that is something that I post this week, like I uh, post like uh, centuries ago. Uh, the web developer know how to manipulate the DOM without using a framework. And everything that you are describing, we can, we can do it without a framework. That a specific thing probably take more work if you don't do it, uh, but that is not something that React gives you. You need to in inject all the library or the dependency to do it. You are not, but probably are the same dependency for do it without React. So you are in the same situation. Like, literally, it's JavaScript who do that. No, I I could be wrong. Like, yeah. Have these have lazy loading here in some point? The okay. This is reading a grab. And uh, let's see what they have. I think if not, if it's not in HTMLX, you can provide it. Like you can do it by yourself. Like it's not like that is 
one thing like you are not restricted to what HTMX provide like you are restricted with a framework you can do it What is <laughs> No 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 I, I will show I will show you this this thing I hate it I hate it with all my hair Yes but I don't have to mix it with JavaScript and I don't have to like it's just this Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the uh, yeah, the backend can be yeah, in like in a React application, the backend can be uh, Python ROS, whatever like. No, exactly. You you can do <laughs> you can do the same. You can do this. Can be a JavaScript file, and you can use like uh, the the old template system and and do it by yourself. If you want to go full JavaScript. Or you can do it, yeah. You can have just the fi the the HTML with some. Uh, like, for example, here, like ID to do ID and do a replace, uh, like a string replace, like or use another template system, like in JavaScript, in for Node, there are another template system, and in for other uh, programming languages, it's even easier, like uh, uh, Golan, ROS, all these uh, PHP have better template system, like very easy to to do it. What the? <laughs> yeah, I say, that. I, uh, yeah, some people don't like it, but oh, like a lot of time is because it looks like it's so simple that it's like, uh, it's like, nah. It's like React developer, and it's like oh, okay, if I am put you outside React, you are not a developer. And some people can do anything outside React, so that is bad. Like we are forgetting computer science topics, like how to order something using the simple bubble sort. Like we are forgetting that. Why? Because we are using the frameworks and. It's not the best thing. Sometimes you need to use something outside the framework. I I have to solve some front-end problem using trigonometry equations. And I have to go back to my the back of my brain and it's like, then I see this in the university. I, 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 I win this with the maximum score. I forget everything because I thought that trigonometric equation was useless for my career. But I have to use a lot of trigonometric equation to solve that specific problem, and that have anything to do with even 
Riyadh or from uh, nothing. I, I had to just start to using a lot of that equation to uh, move elements and determine the two circular uh, collating or determine the point of collision of this cycle. Like a lot of things that I can do, yeah, nothing to do with re Riyadh. Or, or to know the language, like um, a problem that I found in, 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 in my project, we are refactoring the whole application and the previous one, they were um, developing one using eval with uh, dangerous insert in Riyadh, like in the same line of code. And I, I see that it's like, holy moly. And it's like, why are you using uh, dangerous insert? And eval, oh, because it's easier, and it's it's like yes, but you are inserting something that comes from a third party endpoint that we don't know what is coming from there. You are inserting directly in the page without any uh, validation, and it's very slow because you are using eval. It's like two security risks. So, fit at all was like a not using well the tool that was React, and second, not using well the tool that was JavaScript. So you need to know what are you working with. And if you don't know that the val is not, is kind of very specific tool to use, you should not use it. And I don't want to talk bad, but yeah, he don't know that there was a bad thing. So we are forgetting this thing because, oh, it's there. It's in the documentation. Just use it. Oh, you want to insert HTML that comes from an endpoint. Just use dangerous insert. And it's not, the, it's not a good thing to do. Just because it's there don't mean that you need, you should use it. A lot of, yeah, people, because the backend is, don't care, like, you can produce HTML just with anything, even with bash, <laughs> if you want. Because you can have, you can solve that in different ways. Because, uh, for example, you are, let's see that I'm building this. You can pass me a param from your Android application and say, like, so return me a JSON or a header, even better. Return me JSON. And I just, in, in that of producing HTML, I just do JSON stringify or just, I don't have to just say, uh, rest.json and I read the header. Yeah, I, I in the documentation say like, do you want JSON? Send the, this header. Do you? And that is all. If I receive that header, I produce JSON. And it's good for you. Hmm? Oh, 
or you can do both. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Yeah. There are several ways to solve it. Yeah. You can call the API like a uh, subdomain, like uh, mobile, um, that is routed to the JSON one or um, client or web and is routed to the HTMX. So there are different ways to solve it, but it's not a, an issue from you. a meta framework so different point like I always say that you should not use the same tool for everything you should choose your tool according to the problem that you have in front of you if HTMX is good go if Riyadh is better go with Riyadh or Remix or with Angular or with any other framework like uh, there are something to say like if you have a hammer, everything looks like nails. So don't take a l yeah, don't get used too much to that hammer because probably you need a screwdriver for the for the job. So just I think this is the fear and most important task that you need to do when you are starting a project. It's like okay, uh, is React the best option? Yes, okay. Is other framework? Even I this, okay, let's go with this because otherwise it can be very expensive later to change that. And that happened to me, uh, one that I never forget, but was in the back end, like we choose the incorrect database engine. <laughs> that was very expensive because they take us, after six months of the struggling, putting a relational data in a not SQL database, we or yeah, figure out that this is not scaling like we can and we had to stop for three months to rewrite the whole backend code to use the engine that I su suggest in the beginning and and yeah, the team lead the now the client want this. It's like I don't care. I am very I am very not polite when sometimes it's like, I don't care the, what the client want, this is bad. And we are the experts here. And it's like, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, which was very expensive. But if you choose the correct tool at the beginning, it's cheap. And the same happened with Riyadh. I, I, I read, uh, I see a video that was reacting like an article and they say, and the guy say that I almost lost my job because I choose Riyadh for an enterprise level project. And was a lot of problems for that decision because it was not the best tool for that project. But Riyadh worked for a lot of projects. Exactly. Like with anything. No tool solve any problem. That is because you start to have more tools. More questions? No. Okay. Let's go for Pixar.